Good morning and welcome to the word line. I am Elder Charmaine Ernest and I am here this morning <clears throat> with an assignment to uh, facilitate for 15 minutes a teaching on 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 16 through 20. Um, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, we just want to say thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to come before you this morning and facilitate and speak these words of truth to your people. We just ask that you would open our hearts, our minds to receive all that the Holy Spirit that lives in me wants to share with the, your, your people out there. Lord, use us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to share my screen with you today. And uh, <clears throat> we have, um, let me pull it up. Okay. This is the word line. And all right. The scriptures for today is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 16 through 20. This is a, uh, the, the chapter 15 is where the Apostle Paul is dealing with a number of issues that were reported to him as problems in the Corinthian church. And what he did, he addressed those issues and Paul began to address one of the most major doctrinal issues or errors that had crept into the church. And that was that some of the Corinthian uh, believers had quit believing in a bodily resurrection of the dead. They had quit believing in a bodily resurrection from the dead. And we see that in, in verse 12 of 1 Corinthians 15, 12, where it says, now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say, that there is no resurrection of the dead. Now these were born again, these were believers that were saying that they did not believe that there was a resurrection of the dead. Now they were denying, these Christian, these Corinthian church members were denying our bodily resurrection, okay? That mankind would be resurrected from the dead. Now chapter 15 makes the most complete written work on the resurrection of the dead in all of scripture. If you don't do nothing else, you should begin to, um, hold on once, you should begin to read chapter 15, okay, uh, verses 16 through 20. And this is how they read. This is our teaching for today. It says in verse 16, for if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. Verse 18, it says, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, are we all men most miserable? But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept? This is reading from the King James Version. You know, it talks about how Paul tried, he tied, Paul, in these verses, Paul tied our humanity's physical resurrection together with the resurrection of Jesus in an inseparable way. And he repeats it twice in this chapter in two different verses. In verses 13 of chapter 15 and in verse 16, he says the same thing. He says in verse 13, for if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And then he says it again in verse 16. And if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. So Paul made denying our humanity's bodily resurrection equal to denying the physical resurrection of Jesus. In 16, it says, if there's no resurrection of the dead, that means the, the dead humans, then Christ has not been raised from the dead, okay? So this is a major issue 
that Paul was addressing here. In verse 17, he shows the consequences of denying Christ's resurrection. And he says in verse 17, and if Christ be not raised, then your faith is in vain and you are yet in your sins. It makes the gospel in vain, meaning vain means not successful. It means futile, okay? And it makes, if you, <clears throat> if, if Christ don't be raised from the dead, then your, the gospel is in vain, your faith is in vain, it's, it's useless. An additional consequence of denying Jesus's resurrection was that you are yet in your sins. You know what? Your sins have not been forgiven if you deny Christ's resurrection. We know that we are all born in sin as a result of Adam, but as a result of Jesus, our sins can be forgiven. But if you deny Christ's resurrection, you, your sins have not been forgiven. You are yet in your sins. Now, scripture teaches us that the forgiveness of sins comes only by Christ himself. In Matthew 9, verses 2, and 9, verses 5 and 6, it says, And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. So Jesus showed them that he could forgive sin because that brother got up and walked. Then it says in verse five, it says, for whether, whether it's easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee or to say arise and walk. And in verse six, he says, but that you may know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the sick of the palsy, arise, take up thy bed and go into thy house. Jesus, right here, let everybody know he had the right to forgive sins, okay? And in Acts 5, verses 30 through 31, he says, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Raised up Jesus means to raise him from the dead. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus when he slew and hanged on a tree. When you slew him and hang him on a tree, talking about the people, Verse 31, it says, him, Jesus, has God exalted. God is Jehovah. Jesus hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sins. Okay? Paul was saying that anyone who does not believe in the bodily resurrection of all mankind does not believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus. There can be no salvation, nor no righteousness without believing in the resurrection of Jesus. Romans, the 10th chapter, the 9th and 10th verse tells a person what they must do to be saved. If you don't know what a person must do to be saved, this is what it says in Romans, the 10th chapter, the 9th and the 10th verse. This is what the people call the prayer of salvation. It says in verse nine, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus. So you got to confess that Jesus is Lord and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. So you got to believe it in your heart that Jehovah raised Jesus from the dead, the resurrection. Thou shall be saved. So you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in the resurrection and that's how you get saved. And then in verse 10, it says, for with the heart, Man believes unto righteousness. And remember, in your heart, you got to read, in your heart, you got to believe in the resurrection. So that's what makes you righteous. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So the confession is that Jesus is Lord. And that leads to your salvation. And you receive both of them at the same time righteousness and salvation. The moment you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord and that Jehovah raised him from the dead. You got to believe in the resurrection. That was the main, the main message that they were teaching, that it proved who Jesus was. So a person who does not believe that everyone will be physically resurrected cannot be a Christian. You cannot be a Christian if you do not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, because it says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, 
that Jesus is Lord and that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So that's critical to your eternal future. Now this puts the Corinthians who had believed this lie in an awkward place. And the lie that they was believing was that uh, they didn't believe in the resurrection. Now they either had to reject that lie about, the, about no resurrection or they had to reject Jesus. Cause they, that's a package deal. Jesus rose from the dead so that you could rise from the dead. They couldn't have it both ways. They, and this still holds true today. You have to believe in the resurrection to be saved. Now, according to scripture, if Jesus did not rise from the dead, the resurrection, then we could not be saved. That's what we just read. Now let's look at verses 18 through 20 in our lesson today. It says the dead in Christ will be resurrected. Because in verse 18, it says, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. In other words, if you don't believe in the resurrection, the people who have already died will not, it's not coming back. They just perished. And that's not Bible. And if this life only is what we have to hope in Christ, we're all men, we are of all men most miserable. If this is all you got to live for, and when you die, you just perish, that's miserable, okay? But we know that there's a hope for an eternal life, a life beyond this life, okay? It says in verse 20, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept? When he talks about slept, we're talking about people who died that fallen asleep, meaning the dead in Christ, okay? So if a person does not believe in the resurrection, that, that, then there is no hope for the dead Christians. The dead will still stay dead. But look what the words say in John 5, 28 through 29. It says, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in thee which all that are in the graves, this is the dead, shall hear his voice. All that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Because Jesus resurrected all mankind. Because Jesus resurrected, all mankind will experience a resurrection experience too. Now, some will be resurrected to life with God for eternity. And others will be resurrected to damnation, which is life without God for eternity to exist in a terrible place in torture. Now, there are, they will be there in that terrible place, resurrected to damnation with a life without God because of one reason only. They did not believe on Jesus as their Lord and they did not believe in the resurrection of Jesus as we read in Romans the 10th chapter, the ninth and the 10th verse. That's the only thing that will send a person to hell is that they did not believe in Jesus. They did not accept him as their Lord and they didn't believe in the resurrection while they were alive. Okay, verse 20 says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept? Paul used the word first fruits. The use of that word first fruit is very important to his argument for the resurrection. Christ was not the only fruit or the only person that rose from the dead, but he was the first fruit that rose from the dead, okay? And if there's a first fruit, then there has to be a second fruit and a third fruit and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He was saying that Christ was just the first among many to be raised from the dead. Some may question how Jesus could be the first fruit of the dead because there were people raised from the dead prior to Jesus. You know what makes Jesus so significant? The fact that Jesus was raised from the dead never to die again. He is still alive today. Jesus was the first person ever raised from the dead to immortal life. Immortality means life without death. Jesus is alive today, seated in heaven at the right hand of his father, Jehovah, sitting there. 
and we are in Christ, born again believers. This is what Paul was referring to when he spoke of first fruit. The resurrection of Jesus puts Christianity in a class all by itself. There's no religion where the founder of that religion is still alive after death. None of them, Buddha, Muhammad, they still did. But Jesus is alive. Hallelujah, I wanna be in that group. Many people have come and gone who have professed some revelation from God or, or new way of approaching God. But Jesus, but only Jesus, has conquered death, only Jesus. Now this makes him unique and this elevates him above the level of any other person who has ever walked on the earth. The resurrection of Jesus is the ultimate proof of the accuracy of his doctrine. And this is why we believe in the resurrection of Jesus. And we know that because Jesus rose from the dead, we will rise also, those who are born again believers in Christ. And if you want to be a born again believer in Christ and you want to be resurrected from the dead one day, repeat these life-changing words after me. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord of my life and that Jehovah raised Jesus from the dead. I believe in that resurrection. And now, because I do, I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for giving me salvation and righteousness. Thank you, Lord, for giving me eternal life and the forgiveness of all my sins. Thank you, Lord, for healing my mental and physical body and mind. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And if you said those words for the very first time, you just got saved. And the angels in heaven are rejoicing. They say there's a party going on because of you. And we're going to party with you because ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. I will see you in the kingdom because you just got saved and you will be resurrected just like Jesus because Jesus conquered death. And you have a blessed day in the Lord. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.